Short update today on what it's going to take to run this cabin. Uh, it's a small minimalist cabin on solar and a power station, which is the simplest setup you can have and uh, what it's going to require to do that. I wanted to do it today. You can see the sun is on the panel, uh, but it's not directly on it. There's a little bit of shadows and things like that, which is going to be probably, you know, a normal situation for most people. I mounted that on the wall like that because in the winter time I don't have to brush snow off it. It's there's literally no maintenance, and I don't like putting holes in the roof or anything like that. And it's a flexible panel, which made it easy to mount, and I don't have to run wires, you know, too long. It was the simplest setup I could do. So this is a uh, just an update on what the results are of this kind of a setup. So as I stated, I put that on the wall. And I'm going to give you a little closer look of that. If in case you're wondering, uh, All Powers sent this to me. I did a review on this earlier when they sent it to me back in the winter time. I'm getting a better idea of what it's like to, to use this thing. It's a flexible solar panel. It's not a super flimsy fold-up one, but it is flexible. And it was super easy to mount uh, by... I made those little brackets and screwed it to the wall of this cabin. It wasn't... It was it was the simplest solution ever. They don't weigh nearly as much as the glass ones do, so this was this was a good option. I didn't want to put it on the roof to put holes in the roof. Uh, I don't like doing that or trapping moisture or anything underneath of it, and I don't have to brush snow off it this way. So it just works this way. That's a better shot of it uh, close up. That is a flexible panel. It's not like super flimsy flexible. I made a video about it earlier. I'll link that in the description here, or not description, sorry, I'll link it right here on the screen. It's got a bumpy sort of rough surface, and the idea there is it'll catch the sun better at different angles. Uh, you can maybe, I'll get up a little closer, you can kind of see that. It's a, All Powers uh, sent that to me to try out. It's a 200 watt panel, so we're going to see what the results are. When I left this in the cabin a couple of days ago, I had run it down to about 60%-ish uh, from doing some work inside and from doing various things like I was running my small air compressor uh, shop back for a little bit. I'm putting down some flooring and things like that right now. So it was cloudy yesterday and when I came out today we were sitting at 99% as you can see right there. Uh, earlier today, about an hour ago, I was bringing in about 123 watts off that panel. Right now it's showing me 72, 73 watts. And that's because it's not at a great angle right now and there's a little bit of shadows and things like that. But I'm still getting 71, 72 watts. The bottom number there, 37 watts, is what I'm outputting right now. The only thing running is the lights and there's a 12 volt power supply to run the lights and things like that. So even in less than ideal conditions, I'm bringing in more solar than I'm using currently. If I turn on the diesel heater, that'll probably take another 30 watts, but I'm still running exact same, uh, you know, I'm still getting more solar under less than ideal conditions uh, than I'm consuming. So pretty happy about that. Just plugged in my battery charger for my cordless tools. I've been using a circular saw out here as I've been putting in some flooring and things like that. And so that brought up my my uh, requirement there to 83 watts. Still not too bad. So it's about 50 watts for the battery charger is what that takes. I haven't had any need to run a generator or anything like that to, to charge up this power station while I've been doing this. Uh, the solar seems to be covering it so far. Some of the other tools I've been running off this power station while I've been uh, building this is that, well, shop vac for obviously cleaning up sawdust and things like that. But that little air compressor, and uh, I'm running a framing nailer off it. I know that it uh, that air compressor is not big enough to run this framing nailer. I nail about five nails, and it'll it'll cycle at that point. Not the right application, but if I'm running off of just a power station seems to work fine and I just have to wait a couple minutes for the air compressor to catch up once in a while. I'd run my big one but my big one is too much for 
that power station. If I shut the lights off and I have nothing running here but the battery charger, it takes 46 watts to charge the battery. And uh, right now I'm bringing in, well, it looks like 90-ish watts uh, from the solar panel. So I'm bringing in twice as much solar as, as what it takes to charge that battery. And I obviously don't need to charge the power stations because it, it, it's, it's full. There you have it. So for a small cabin like this where I need to run some lights, I need to run a, a heater, diesel heater in my case, uh, charge some batteries, maybe charge phones when you need to. The 200 watt panel plus the power station seems to be adequate for, for doing that kind of stuff. If I was doing anything more significant, obviously I would want more capacity. But this is a minimalist cabin with it's a dry cabin I don't have a, like a lot of utilities or anything like that running here so if you're wondering what it would take to run a small off-grid cabin with just the basics this seems to do it 200 watt panel a power station with some capacity on it mine's a 2000 watt hour uh, capacity which it would be more than enough to run for a couple of days uh, with zero input so you know that adds and certainly earlier today i was getting 123 130 watts of input of solar uh, for when the sun was directly on that so that's that that should be adequate for now i'll update this you know later on in the year probably if once uh, uh we get a better idea and uh things are things are running Thanks for watching.